Hello, Techheads, episode 276 of Aussie Techheads. Yes, I know it's your favourite podcast of the week, Thursday nights. Tonight is 9th of the 2nd. Jeez, time is getting away. The, the one-day internationals are underway. Uh, we've smashed India. Uh, they, they sort of gave, gave us a bit of curry in the 2020, but hey, that's, a, that's just a toy game anyway. So welcome. Welcome once again, Aussie Techheads. I'm Glenn, and tonight we've got Eric, and in the, in the uh, near future, hopefully Will, but sitting behind me, as you can see on the video hello stream, uh, first of all, we'll say we'll say hello to Garth because he's closest. Hello, <laughs> hello, Garth. How are you? Good doing? day, Glenn. Good day, guys. How are we all? Now, Garth's actually live in the studio tonight, and he's um, we did do a little pre-record of a iOS review coming up later in the show, so um, stay tuned for that. And now, always, as always, the the stability of the uh, <laughs> of the podcast and the Sydney side of things. Hello, Eric. How you doing? Hello, sir. Uh, I'm good. And how is everybody in the chat room? Good. I think they're good. They're all uh, having fun. They're all relaxed. They've got a drink. They've got a beer. They've got some chippies. And uh, all relaxed. So that's good. Very yeah. good. Now, that's good. Yes, you can join us too live. Uh, dot the secret hub dot com. Or actually, we've, we're going to change. Well, we're not going to change that. That's going to always be there. But uh, just to t hone it more in, we might even change it to... Um, we can also access it at live.aussietechheads.com.au because we've Im I've embedded the live stream into the web page. Yay. Uh -huh. And you can also check out the chat room below it. And I think, look, it might even be a little bit, bit better of a uh, setup. Uh, you got the video on top, chat on the bottom. So have a look at that. Uh, you can also access it, obviously, directly through the links on the web page, aussietechheads.com.au. But it's all, uh, it's all linked in, linked up, and ready to go. This website is coming together nicely. But uh, join us every Thursday night if you can. Uh, Skype, call in live. Skype, if you've got something to say, if you've got something to get off your chest, and radio.thesecrethub.com if you want live audio stream only, and also if you're just hanging around the traps with nothing else to do on a Friday through to th Thursday afternoon, you can uh, listen to repeats. Woo, I know you love it. <laughs> I know you love it. <laughs> All right, well, let's... Uh, Let's get cracking. Oh, and also thanks to Brad and the boys, techwebcast.info. They come on at uh, replay their show, Tech Webcast, before the before Aussie Tech Heads, every, every Thursday night. Well, well, where are we going to start tonight, boys? Um, we, we, while we wait for Will, we'll just have a bit of a bit of a yin-yang. Uh, Eric, what have you been up to this week? Fairly busy, you, you've been uh, saying? Oh, what have I been up to this week? Um, it's been busy, nothing unusual, except for the fact that you can't rely on tradesmen. Right, right. Which, what, which, um, which ones you got going this time? Plumbers? Wash, washing machine. Oh. Washing machine. Mm. Um, oh, geez. I know. You think that you think you sit down and think to yourself, geez, they must have too much work. They must be. They must. Hey, all, yeah. this, all due I, I, respect I, I to any tradies out there, but bloody hell, it's hard work to come on time. Yeah, well, I suppose they're disorganised. That, and that's why I guess they're tradesmen. They need a secretary, and if they don't have the missus at home doing the secretarial stuff, uh, well. That's what They're happens. useless. Yeah, but yeah, useless. I know it is hard. You wait, you sit there waiting all day. They're just nearly as bad as um, modem installers, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, if he doesn't call me tomorrow, I'm going to name and shame him on the show next week. <laughs> name and shame, name and shame. Oh yeah. Now I actually went for a train ride today. On the good. <laughs> There's a bit of news for you. Yeah. Well okay. done, bloody whatever your name is. Um, uh, yeah. Thomas, the tank engine. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, that was the end of that story. So, uh, what else is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. If you give us the fact that you've gone for a ride, there's got to be something, you know, some interesting aspect to follow that up, surely. There, there, there is an interesting aspect to All follow right. that. What? I sat down on the, tr on the train, as you yep. do, sat down in your chair, you know, on the train, and I look up and I went, and it said it had a sign up there, free Wi-Fi, Queensland Rail free Wi-Fi. <sighs> Queenslandrail.com.au uh, forward slash Y, as in W I hyphen F I, and uh, it tells you how to log in. Cool, logged in. Uh, not the fastest thing on the on the planet. Some would say faster than the trains, but uh, not the fastest. It's faster than Will's connection at the moment. It would this be. Is, uh, maybe Will should maybe Will should take a train ride. <laughs> right. Take a train Could ride. Could just sit on the train backwards and forwards. <laughs> That's right. He could probably he could probably do the show every week, and it'd probably be cheaper than 150 bucks at Floptus and bloody scouching him. <laughs> for that's his, right. That's for, right. For his internet access, he's not paying 150 bucks, is he? Uh, oh, I don't know what he's. Let's I, hope I think it's not something like that. I think it's something. Hang on, he's, he's coming into the chat. He must have fixed things up. Did you fix things up, Will? Yeah, I just started ran randomly threatening things with hammers. 
<laughs> oh, that always works. <laughs> that always works. So what ha- What was the go there? Did you... Um... Oh, I, I don't know. Yes, everything's, right. uh, um, everything's just working. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I was just saying about I jumped on a train today and uh, they had free Wi-Fi. And so, yeah, I logged in, did a speed test. Yeah, it's, it went slow. It was, uh, look, I did take a, a speed test of it. I think it was about 1, 1. 1.5 down, but about same up. So it wasn't too bad, I suppose, That's for a commute. Fair. Yeah, it was, it was, it was not bad. It wasn't too bad at all for a free, you know. That's all right. Yeah, it's, it was probably bearable. So, um, yeah. Better than Maccas. Well, yeah, what, what's oh, yeah. Maccas doing? You don't know how oh, fast they are? About Nothing. 100k up and yeah, right. 500 down. Yeah. Mm. So I, cause I remember ages ago <laughs> we were talking about the, you know, the story about Queensland Rail getting Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I didn't think anything came of it, but there you go. The I've ra- got, oh, okay. I've never found it. I've been on there a few times, had a look, and it's not been there available. Yeah, yeah well, it's not on every train because I, mm. I just took the little fella up for a train ride up to Ormo, came back again, and uh, it wasn't on the, on the train on the way back. So mm. there you go. That's, mm. that's life. That's life. And it's only on. It's on a handful of buses. I think it's on about fifty buses at the moment up up here too. Oh, okay. okay yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, it's good on the train. Because I, I don't know. For those of you who go on the train from the Gold Coast to Brisbane, there is a little dark spot, and which goes from probably about Coomera. That's, oh, that's that not very nice. Well, there is a little dark spot. Yeah, on the it's a little blight on the internet track, uh, from Coomera to about Beanley or just before Beanley, something like that. But, uh, but anyway, enough of that rubbish. Talking about internet, oh, I've got an NBN story. <laughs> we'll get, we'll, we'll fire, we'll fire up. Um, all right, NBN. Did you guys see the NBN fire story? Up, let's go. Did you? I suppose Eric, you would have, you would have, you'd know what NBN story I'm about to, to let go. NBN Co. are going to spend I'm some more money. I'm all over it. They're spending more money. Six hundred and twenty million dollars. Yes. Gee, really? I'm surprised. Cheaper the price. Cheaper the price. <laughs> so look up how many people. Hang on, I'll tell you. Six. Hang on. Six. I'll tell you, based on their current average cost, I'll tell you. You just keep talking. Okay, MBN Company is going to launch. Cost. They're launching two satellites uh, into space. They're building them, they're programming them, and they're launching them into space uh, to provide broadband coverage to remote Australians. A move. For, for 2,480 people. Yeah, there's not many. Actually, I've got the... Uh, no, no, that's that's... That's based on the current average cost at the moment of two hundred and fifty thousand oh, okay. dollars per connection. Yep. Yeah, I had, I had, um, I had. A, oh, that's probably about right. I had a different stat. I've got a stat here. According to the NBN Co, the satellite service is expected to provide broadband service to one hundred and six thousand premises by two thousand and twenty-one. There's that magic number again. Probably, it's it probably divisible, divisible by seven. That's absolute so crap. That's I think the government works crap. in sevens, uh, equating to a cost of yeah eighteen thousand. I've got two hundred thousand premises in most of <laughs> oh right! Oh no one knows what's going on. There's more well, and more based people on their living record, out the it's going to be nowhere near that. It's going to be two and a half thousand people yeah. at an average yeah. cost of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per person, which means there's a payback payback period um, of fifteen hundred years. <laughs> wouldn't it be Wouldn't it be cheaper just to dig a hole and plant the cable? Would Would that be feasible or or not really? Of course it is. There's obviously telephone I mean, there's, lines there's going out there. There's plenty of prisoners out there, well, no, well, out there well, you know who what? can uh, work for give free. Them yeah. Yeah. Give them cheap 3G. Yeah. Give them cheap 3D. Yeah. That's what they're using now. Not all places have it, though. Mm. Oh, the, the, mate, it's a lot cheaper to bang a 3G satellite up there. The 600, 600 million, I reckon, you could fit a few places out with it. Look, the Prime Minister uh, and Communication Minister, Stephen Connery, they said they had secured a deal with Space Systems Laurel to build two satellites in California to be launched by 2015. The government said the, con- the contract was part of a total investment of about $2 billion in its long-term satellite service, which will service about 3% of the population. Is that worth it? 3%? It would be if you're one of those 3%, I well, suppose. But. <laughs> you, you, you've got to think, though, at the moment, we're renting the satellites to pay for the internet. So at the moment, it's false economy because basically... They're not making any money at all. It's all they're still losing money because they've got to rent it. So, at least they might still lose money, but they're going to make something out of it. Yeah, but how much? How much time would you have to rent for? Like you know, before yeah. you sort of, on um, before you broke, broke loss with um, if you had some term. But to, you know, if you, you're spending two hundred and how much was it? Two hundred and sixteen, two hundred six hundred twenty million. Yeah, six twenty. Like how much? How many years in rent would it take to get the six hundred and twenty million? 
that's what I'm, you know, so... That's right. Look, it's not a matter of whether they're renting or buying. No. That's not the matter. Wh- whatever their cost is, whether it's a purchase, which they amortise over 30 years, or rent, which they've locked in, in over 30 years, the point is if you're paying for something that costs you $1, you've got to try and sell it for $1.50, regardless mm. of whether you're buying it or you're renting it. Now, this, this government, because they're useless, there's a good chance they'll spend it $620 million up front and it'll be a black hole. Because the um, the opposition came up, and I think it was Malcolm Turnbull said that that they, you know, even if the government changed, they could be locked into this deal. Oh, well, I couldn't yeah. imagine, like, I, yeah, look, I couldn't see what was wrong with just utilising existing st- stuff and renting what's up there. Um, but even if they are locked into the deal, like, there's probably nothing to stop us from using the satellites for something else anyway. You can you can right. sell the satellite though. You can sell if they oh, don't yeah. want to use it. If they come in. And I go, look, we're gonna we're gonna can the NBN, which I don't mm. think they will, but just say they do. Yeah. Um, then they just they lease the satellites and get someone to pay them rent. Yeah. yeah. Is there much of a market for, yeah. for used mean, satellites? So that's part of... Yeah. Sorry. See, that's part of the thing that's happening with these satellites. These satellites are going up actually have that much bandwidth that it will be more than just internet. They're actually going to be telecommunications satellites. They're going to be um, pay TV satellites. They're going to be, you know, um, data satellites for uh, other services as well for government services, things like that. So they're not just going to be just internet satellites. The, the reason they cost so much is they're buying these hugely equipped um, these hugely equipped satellites that they can use for so much more than just that. Um, and mm. part of the problem they're having now is because they are sharing satellites with other companies is, of course, that there is only so much bandwidth a satellite can send up and down. So at the moment, because they're sharing that, that's, you know, they're restricted, but once they put their own satellites up, then mm. they have full use over their bandwidth. But I mean, so. but, but, I, look, I agree with I that, mean, Will. I think that's, that's you know, they've got redundancy basically built in automatically, and that's a good thing. Yeah. My problem is it's this government. The management of this satellite will be a complete debacle. Mm. But that's, I mean, That's the issue. It will be, but, I mean, we're going to change governments and, and that'll change, you know. I mean, for example, um, at the moment you can get, I think it's 98 or 99, I think it's 98.9 percent of Australia with a um, satellite phone. There's still a few black spots. Well, theoretically, these will these will fix those black spots, which doesn't sound like much. But when you think that the EPIRB devices use two-way satellite communication, you know, it, mm. it does have its other benefits as well. But as you're right, this government is going to completely destroy it. But yeah. this government's not going to be around forever. So yeah. But well, I mean, right. like, but at the end of the day, like, six hundred twenty million to three percent of the population, and the speed is going to be twelve meg a second, which is really not that great. It's not that really. wonderful, is it? No, I know. Well, it's well, that's, that's, you've sync- got to, that's a synchronous. That's up and down. Yeah, hmm. you've got to remember though. We you, you can't expect to make money on this kind of this aspect of the investment. You know, this is not what that's for. This is to service the people who can't. This is yes, that's right. They're treating this like electricity. Or, mm. or a telephone or any, line. Any it's, 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 a, it's a utility. It's a utility, and, look, and, that's, and, and, that's, and over that's time, the way it does you know, need it's, to a, be it's a big, it's a long term, it's a 50 mm. year investment on things like this. You don't really get your money back for 50 years, but that's not why you put them in. You don't, mm. these sort of things are long, they're not short term. That's right. Um, you know, let's, let's buy it and flip it. You know, when they started putting lamp poles up in the 1800s with gas in it, they were losing money hand over fist, those gas companies, but it's a long term thing. And, we all know where the gas companies are now. Mm. All right. Mm. So, so. I mean, you got the other extreme as what happened. You look at Germany after the war, they had the option to rebuild with copper cables or with optic fibre. One of the members of parliament or whatever it is over there was owned a copper mine. So they decided to relay copper cables for the entire area. Now, of course, you know, 50, 60 years later, they're regretting that decision. So it's going to cost them twice as much. So in some respects, yeah, I think, they're on the right track, at least. Yeah, look, if it helps th- three people, good. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to make sure. Yep. Look, it just I think that it, it's it's all going to come down to how com- whoever whoever's been charged in government or outside of government to monitor and handle this and sell any excess stuff that they can. They've got to look at this, even though it's a long-term thing, they've got to look at this commercially as well to make sure that we as taxpayers aren't paying through our asses for this for the next 100 years. Mm. 
Yeah, well, as long as you know, they, as you said, they probably use it for something else anyway. Uh, if they if they if they think it's a bad idea or the government. If they're smart it. about it, yes. Hmm. All right, so let's move on to um, look. There's been a bit of a, a story through the week with Apple and Google coming under fire. Uh, well, not coming under fire, but they're coming out because their app stores have been been coming under fire through uh, people saying that uh, there's companies out there that sell their services to increase the downloads of their apps and thus giving a false reading and getting the app higher up in the list yep. of favourites. Now, yep. little little bot farms they call them. <laughs> yeah. So there's been a developer who's who's come out, uh, blown the whistle on the practice of using automated PCs. Uh, also known as the bot farms, to push apps up the charts. Uh, the anonymous developer said that it was a common practice to pay for bot farms to inflate rankings. So a developer, yeah. a developer claimed that an unnamed firm had offered to give him his app a top 25 ranking in return for five grand. Five uh, grand. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, which you would do yeah, if you had It's pretty cheap at the price, really. Yeah, oh, when yeah. When you consider the market that, you know... Yeah, so Google and Google, uh, meanwhile, is also determined to tighten to tighten itself up a bit. Last week, the search engine Google revealed that it had been using a malware checker, uh, code named Bouncer, uh, for the second half of 2011, and it's used and its use has led to a 40 percent decrease in the number of potential uh, malicious apps on the Android market. Now, this guy, Cat- Catalan Casossi, who is a security expert, said there could be a problem that Bouncer only scanned the Android market. So uh, there are several other websites where, from where Android users can install applications. In, in fact, most malicious applications that the, the Catlin uh, discovered were actually hosted on third-party markets, not on the Android market uh, as uh, by Google. So, uh, yeah, look, I think with and the, you know, the App Store, they're making big dollars, and so everyone's trying to uh, cash in, I guess. You've got mm. search engine optimization people, so now you've got apps... Yep. Optimization people, I guess. Yeah. Just fitting in with that, you see there was a the story that um, in the last five years since the iPhone been you know has been released and sort of started this mobile app development, there's now f- half a million people employed. Yes. Worldwide. Indirect, on, indirectly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just old. from just from you know mobile development. I thought that stat actually well, just for the US. That was, was US, that? yeah. I think it was you. And uh, and they've paid out in four four and a half years, nearly in their fifth year, they've paid out something like three billion dollars to developers. It's probably closer to four now. Mm. Mm. That's that's a that's just another economy, isn't it? The app economy. And when you think about it, that's only thirty percent. They've kept seventy. Mm. Yeah. So Apple. Look, I heard a rumor. I don't know if anyone else has heard this, but this is just a total rumor <laughs> that just just was verbally given to me. But someone said um, that Sony and Apple are sort of getting into bed. Did anyone hear that? Getting into in bed. What, in what, in what, like in jo- what respect? Join, oh, no, mm. no, no details, but joining forces in some way. I would, if that's the case, that would probably be the actual Apple TV. Mm, could be, could, could be. be. Because there has been a lot of rumours that they're actually going to come out with a TV and Sony make some of the best LCD screens and OLED screens around. Mm. Do Sony? So maybe, maybe. Oh, Sony make great screens. But are they the are they the manufacturers? They are manuf- of their own screens. I thought yeah. Samsung made Sony screens. Yeah, I I'm not sure that they do anymore. Mm. They could have sold. They may not. Maybe they don't anymore. Yeah, I thought I thought Samsung does it now. There's not only, sure. as far as I know, there's only three screen manufacturers: so Samsung, LG, and um, I can't think of the other one. I looked it up. Anyway, we were sticking with Google. Uh, Google Chrome browser is now available to anyone with the Android 4 smartphone or tablet. So Chrome for Android uh, shares your browser tabs across all your desktop and mobile devices, plus history, preferences, and bookmarks. That's pretty handy. Hmm. Yeah, it's also been redesigned to include mobile-optimized tabbed browsing. That's as easy to navigate as if you're holding a deck of cards. Whoopie doo. <laughs> and um, and um, and um, no flash. No, no flash. <laughs> Adobe has confirmed its runtime environment isn't heading to Chrome for Android. Not yet, anyway. So not at all. Not at all. I, I tried, I tried, I tried to put it on the Kindle install. Fire. I couldn't find it. What the... Um, you can install Flash on your Android anyway. So I don't in know the what existing the, browser, the issue with that is. With the existing browser. But Adobe yeah. have confirmed that with Chrome for Android, they're not going to support it. 
I think, yeah, I think. Uh, no, but I mean, it's, you just install Flash as a separate program. Yeah, but it's got to be a plug-in. Because I've Chrome. got it installed and I use it on, well, I, it works on all my browsers, on all my apps as a standalone program. Well, it just calls it up when it needs it. So yeah, I, somehow, I can't really see how that's... Don't ask me, but with Chrome, when, um, when Google replace uh, with, you know, upcoming versions of the OS and Chrome is the, um, the central browser, browser yeah. it, it won't support Flash any longer. So I guess even with a lot of browsers that you have now for iOS devices, mm -hmm. they still use Safari in the back end anyway. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, so but anyway, so we'll, we'll yeah, live and learn. Find out when it happens. Mm. Find out when it happens. <laughs> that's right. But that's weird because Chrome's basically Safari anyway. It's all built on WebKit, so. Yep. Mm. Now, um, what, what else have we got here? Has anyone else got any stories they want to... Um, well, you out? stole my uh, NBN uh, story. Oh, sorry about that. I'm no, that's all right. <laughs> but there was just, a, just a, a side story to that, that the people that the government actually contracted on that 620 million are actually being sued. Why? By, by a California-based space... Uh, no, sorry, by Vis Viasat Inc. Right. They right. have been accused of using... The tech, they're stealing the technology, basically. So government's got in bed with a couple of dodgies. Gee, <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. We took the cheapest price we could get. Oh. So, yeah, hey, we'll sell this to you. We don't own it, but don't tell anyone. Nicola Roxon has said the, rev the uh, copyright exceptions review that has been announced uh, would consider whether exceptions to the operation of the Copyright Act remained adequate and appropriate in the fast-paced environment in which we now live. Digital environment. So general exception to the act. So obviously this has all sprung up because of the Optus decision in the courts where they can, uh, you know, they, their little platform of recording the free-to-air shows up in the Optus cloud and you can stream them back whenever you want. The, the Telstra and all the NRL and well, all that's like that. changing too. Why? What are they, what's that doing? There's a story on that as well. Oh, I didn't see that one. What are the, what's happening there? But anyway, just with Basically, the Basically um, all the, yeah, finish yours off. Yeah, so while, before the, um, while we were looking at that, the uh, general exceptions in the Act cover issues such as fair use and uh, content time shifting and the making of a copy of a computer program for backup purposes. Roxon said the government was determined to encourage new opportunities with the digital economy ahead of the NBN, but the draft terms of reference are to be released shortly. So here we And uh, Will, did you follow up with that? Did you say yeah, the, uh, basically since that, Optus Victory store, uh, st story was put through last week. Um, the sports groups basically are lobbying the Prime Minister now to change the Copyright Act um, to they basically can't. change that rule. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. We'll be the, so, we'll the laughing stock of the whole world if they do that. What if we've got a Because the Copyright Act goes... What, so you're saying that... So the, no, they can't change the, the look. Look, the the, the, look, the, God, the the decision, in my view, was right. It's fair use, and the and the and the decision that came down was correct. Now, what the the broadcasters want to do is they want to change it and say, no, 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 that's not right. Now, if they do that, they're going against everything everyone's doing, and that's the fair use law laws mm. that they that they started in the states the, the time and, the, and the whole thing. It's ridiculous. They, mm. they, they want their cake and eat it too. So I guess what, yeah. Mike, well, basically what? their argument is that the go on. Um, their argument is that the law is a 1968 copyright law, and they're basically saying that it fails to have provisions for modern, you know, modern usage. But it's funny because on the same the same token, of course, Malcolm Malcolm Turnbull's got involved, and it's just, <laughs> it's just a to and fro argument. Telstra gets. They're two cents worth. AFL's in there. Everybody's having a, a go. Everyone, on everyone wants a cut. On the but, flip side. But I think that yeah, the, the Copyright yeah, Act... On I the think, flip side, studios... Sorry, Glenn? Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say, oh, I think the Copyright Act, although I think you said it was, what, drafted in 69, but it has been amended because of it's introduced such things as time shifting and, and all this sort of stuff. So that all this time shifting and uh, it, one hmm. copy and backup sort of stuff, backup purposes, that's all... That's all in there. I don't know. If there it's was in. a section added in 2006. Yeah, it would have been somewhere around there, I think. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
So, the, but I, uh, I think which is that, when they changed the law to state that you couldn't even prior to that if you recorded a, t- a TV show. Well, prior to that, it was illegal to record anything off TV. Yes. In 2006, they changed it so that then you could at least record a TV show. It just meant that you had to watch it in its entirety, including the ads, and then delete and it after delete you it. watched it. That's right. You could, you could <laughs> Which no one ever did. <laughs> no. no that's right. So, you know, they're on the ball. Yeah. But now, yeah. My question is this. Um, the government's jumped in, as they do, interfering. Just want to know what it is. Don't let the courts do their job and let the, the, the system... Just you know, play out um, because at the end of, at the end of the day, fairness and the, and usually fairness and equity will usually prevail. Mm. They've come in and saying we want to urgently consider options to ensure copyright laws are working effectively. Now, that is such a double-sided, ambiguous statement. What are they really saying there? Are they saying that we don't think the copyright laws are fair, or we don't think the decision is fair? If they mm. don't think the copyright law is fair. Well, there's no need to jump in because the judge has just made his decision and that's what they call a case precedent. Mm. And yeah. legislation is usually built around case precedents. So why are they jumping in? Because, oh, we want to urgently consider. Why? The judge has just made a decision. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Now, or they want to go in and change it because they've got, they've got Telstra and Optus and everyone else in their back pocket because this NBN thing is going to you know, blow up in their face because the... The telcos are um, giving them a bit of a hard time, saying you've got to do something about this, or else the end, we're going to back out of the NBN. But if this, if all this has sort of sprung up because of the Optus decision, like, like realistically, like I was thinking about this today, and I'm not too sure how that Optus uh, setup actually works. Whether or not, I know you, you can push a button and you can tape a free-to-air channel on the Optus hard drive, say, and then you, you play it back, stream it back to your phone whenever you feel like it. So it's just like having, it's just like pushing a button on a video recorder. That's sitting in the Optus lounge room. Mm. That's right. But uh, I don't I see what remember the because it doesn't matter. You've you've done exactly what you would do at home, except you're just watching it outside mm. of your home. But my that's question, my question was, which I don't know the answer to, is that you know with, with the different AF, with the AFL code, especially how there's games on in different states. Are you able to tape? Say if you're in Brisbane and the say the the Brisbane game isn't live to air, are you able to tape that game? If you're in mm. Brisbane and start replaying what you've taped, say thirty seconds no. after you've started, yeah, it. that would have to be a breach of their copyright, wouldn't? Oh, well, not like I think the, the game has to be finished. You would. Is that right? The game has to be finished. Basically, the game has to be finished before you can start playing it back. I thought it was only you could only record whatever shows you were eligible to receive. Well, well, that that's probably part of it as well. But I think the, the, the basic tenant is it, it's not available to Optus until it's been televised. That's right. That's right. Okay. Which means you can't stream it 30 seconds after the game starts being broadcast. But if, I, but if, you're, if Optus's headquarters is in Sydney, which I don't know where it is, it probably is. But it it head, is in Sydney, yeah. So the headquarters in Sydney. So they they're say they're, they've got the, the feed from Channel 7 Sydney. Does that mean that the guys in... Uh, it'd be no, region. It, they'd know what region you were pressing. Yeah, the button they'd know from. what region it right. was because your IP yeah. address on your phone is is region based as right. well. They'd know exactly where you were coming it's from. It's not even the IP. It's just part of the phone yeah. setup. But then that would mean that there's different games all over the place. So is Optus just taking a feed from Seven Sydney, or are they, are they? Well, I think it's going to depend on where you are. If you're in Brisbane, you'll get certain games, and if you're in Sydney, you mm. get certain games, and they're the only ones you could but watch. That means Optus would have to have a feed. From mm. each each cap, yep. each capital city, they'd probably have redundancy in each capital city. Well, they anyway. do anyway. They do anyway. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. All right. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> enough of enough of. All right. Practice. But well, Julia Gillard, keep your grubby mitts off it. Yeah. Keep out of it. Uh, just uh, look. Everything's fair use. It's all fair use. Yes. It's all fair it's use. Fair like use for said, me to give it to my got, friend. You're not and doing and anything like... different. Look. Put it this way. What if What if I did this? AFL plays. I record it on my Optus box. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Or and I and and or whatever way I record it, put a camera in front of it. It's free to air. I can do what I want with it. Yeah. Right. I can put a video camera in front of it and tape it. Right. And I come up to fly up the next day to see Glenn and say, oh, I've got some, I've got a footy game on my camera. I'll just plug it in HDMI into your TV. Let's watch the AFL. Yeah. There's, and there's, and How's that? Yeah. So it's still personal that. use. But yeah. it's still because personal use. I'm watching it. No, but you can't do that because under the this is what I was saying before about the dodgy. The, the dodgy 2006 revamp is if you've recorded in your 
at home as well as being able to watch it once and have to delete it after that. You can only watch it in the location it was recorded. Yeah, well, that's a stupid law. Yeah. And that's that just is. why the judge that, came oh, down I guess that's, why, that's, that's how they got it through, though, isn't it? You know? and that's, and that's why the judge said, no, you lose. Yeah, that's rubbish. Yeah. That's rubbish. Exactly. But then again, as we were saying last week, we, we were touching on, like, I can record it here. I can re, like move it to my media center. And then I can stream it to my phone wherever I am. Anywhere in the, in the world. So well, the Slingbox the... does that, for example. Yeah. And the Americans yeah. let people in America do this. Yeah. So what yeah. is well, the problem? You your Slingbox but... into your cable box and into the internet, and mm. then you can fly to Europe, That's log in it. via your iPad, and watch your shows straight off yeah. your digital recorder at it's home. It's only because it's, the... it's Optus and Telstra. That's right. But you're watching your location-specific show. They have that's they right. have their similar so the issues, thing. though. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what. But that's they have the same sort of issues crop up there. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. that's, that's, what, what, watch this space. It's all going to unfold. It'll be all like a rubbish. But it'll be all Keep <laughs> out of it, you lad. Keep it'll, out it'll of it. It'll all unfold. All right, well, well, well while we're uh, getting over that and copyright issues, how about we go to something that's not copyrighted? Because you can download them. And once you pay your little fee, of course, seven bucks, audible.com. And I think Eric's got another 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 special one for us tonight. Uh, yes. You, yes, if you want a free Audible dot com book audio book you can go to aussietechheads.com.au click on the audible link sign up and uh grab your first book for free and you can probably even grab this one eric which what what are you on tonight now i would suggest very very firmly if that's the right word that you read this whether it be book form or audible form audible is good because you can do it when you're in the car and whatnot now it's called the Outliers or Outliers, the story of success. Did my Michael, Malcolm Gladwell? He's got a few books, mm. but this book is centres on the ten. What what he terms something along the lines of the ten thousand hour rule. In other words, you're not going to be good at something unless yeah. you've done it for ten thousand hours. You become an expert, and you become an expert. In, in this is in this stunning book, Malcolm Gladwell takes us on an intellectual journey through the world of Outliers, the best and the brightest the most famous and the most successful, he asked the question, what makes high achievers different? His answer is that we pay too much attention to what successful people are like and too little to where they are from. That is their culture, their family, their generation, their and the idiosyncratic experiences of their upbringing. Mm. Along the way, he explains the secrets of software billionaires and what it takes to be a great soccer player, why Asians are good at maths, and what made the Beatles the greatest rock band? Right. So this guy, so this guy, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, um, does it say is it intellectual journey? So who? Is, what's his qualifications? He's just like a, some. I'm just trying well, to look, read look him up here. Yeah. So obviously he's some sort of authority on it, and he's and he's he's, written, a, he's quite the intellectual. And he's and he's written a book, and he's also spoken it. He's written a thousand books. You go and click on, and he's written hundreds, he's dozens of books. Right, right. All right, so you got his li- name. Oh, I did, but you just get this other business stuff. Yeah, then click he- on the Malcolm, by Malcolm Gladwell. See that up there? Click on that. Click on where it says by Malcolm Gladwell. Yep. And you'll get all these books there. And you'll get all these books. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the tipping point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. another one. That's uh, Blink, yeah. the power of thinking without thinking. I don't know what, about that one. What the dog Love said. that. Give me that one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And what's this other one here? Oh, he, he, he's teamed up with Joseph Finder for a conversation with Joseph Finder and Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, the tipping point, Blink, Adam Gopnik and Malcolm Gladwell surveying mankind. But anyway, Eric, you've got a little audio go. grab. A little, little sample. Here we go. Given that in the previous decade, almost all of them had come from the same village in Italy. In 1896, a dynamic young by the name of Father Pasquale de Nisco, took over at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. De Nisco set up spiritual societies and organized festivals. He encouraged the town folk to clear the land and plant onions, beans, potatoes, melons, and fruit trees in the long backyards behind their houses. He gave out seeds and bulbs. The town came to life. The Rosettans began raising pigs in their backyards and growing grapes for homemade wine. Schools, a park, a convent, and a cemetery were built. Small shops and bakeries and restaurants and bars opened along Garibaldi Avenue. More than a dozen factories sprang up, making blouses for the garment trade. Neighboring Bangor was largely Welsh and English, and the next one over was overwhelmingly German, which meant 
given the fractious relationships between the English and Germans and Italians in those years, that Rosetto stayed strictly for Rosettans. If you had wandered up and down the street. Yeah, so he's... Going on a bit of a tirade there, so I don't know. But go and have a listen to it. It's very, very good. Um, I've actually got the paperback version of this, which I've just started, because I had it for a while and I haven't got around to it. Hmm. Um, and I've read excerpts and whatnot, and it is very good. And it just basically says, do something for long enough. I reckon, Glenn, you'd be up on 10,000 hours at the moment. Yeah, on probably. Your, uh, podcast. Probably, yes. You work out, you know, pre-production, show, showtime, post-production, times mm. it by how many shows, and I reckon you're, you're close. Pretty close. You're pretty close. I'll have, to hear, I'll have to have a listen and see what he says. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, look, the, it rates really well. Uh, the average ratings, look, there's, there's 35, is it 35,000 ratings? 5,000, 5,838. Yeah, it's all and four and a half four stars half. or above, yeah. So it's, it's obviously good, a good yeah. book. Obviously a good book. So if you want to get that one, I think you might actually get that one, maybe not for free, but for a discount. I think that looks like a bit of a, a bit more expensive than the rest of them. But well, um, I think special offer, learn how to get this for $7.49. I think if you're a member, you get it for $7.49 or with one um, credit or something like that. Yeah, I'd say that's still a one credit book. But I one of the benefits of being a member is you get the um you get the specials as well, yeah. Oh yeah. And uh Garth, are you an audible listener? Yeah, I don't mind a few audible books now and then. I've yeah. just one thing I just found actually is the um the light membership. So you pay nine ninety five, I think, go. for yep. for twelve months. Yep. But that then gives you still you still then get access to all the special offers and so yeah. I've just bought a a book for five, yeah, you, you know, you five dollar sales and things like that. Yeah, cheaper, cheaper you books, get cheaper yeah. prices. So if you're not buying that many, if you're only going to buy, what do they say, something like five a year or something like that, mm. this is the cheapest way to do it. Okay. So, yeah, so if you want to learn more, just uh, go to the aussietechhouse.com.au website, click on the Audible link and uh, sign up and learn more. And do us, do us all a favour because that helps us out immensely with, uh, with the cost of uh, putting together the show for you. So, um, because the show is for free. As, as you all, all know. You may have noticed by now. <laughs> you may have noticed, that's right. So it is for free. And this just helps it all along. So good on you. And uh, yeah, audible.com and aussietechhouse.com.au. Thanks, Audible. Okay, now let's move on to, what What are we going to move on to? Let's let's move, let's move let's do a, 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 a Garth review. Do you want to do your review, Garth? Yeah, should we just nip out the back and get changed? Yeah, I just grow me. <laughs> grow me your me. review, not your Broadway <laughs> review. No. <laughs> no, we've got a... Um, yeah, we've, we've uh, recorded some little iOS reviews. We've got another one here tonight. Now, wait till we get it up here. And uh, and here it is. Yeah, so caught up with uh, Garth again this week, and he's got another app for us, uh, something I think he's brought his auntie along. How are you going, Garth? G'day, Glenn. How are you going again, mate? Yeah, good, good. What have, what have we got going this week? We have auntie, all right. Yeah, good old ABC. Yeah. Um, everyone's seen the ads, you know, catch up on ABC iView? Yep. Straight on the iPad is the best way to do it. Ooh, if you've yeah. got an iPad, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, but um, I have got an iPad and I am catching up all the time, which is great. It beautiful. Is, it's a good app. Good app. It is a good app. Let's you stream over 3G now as well. Make sure you've got a nice hefty data plan in there because some of these shows can be quite large. Yes. That is the nice thing about the app, actually. Before you start playing in, in the info section, it'll show you how big whatever it is you're going to watch is. So you know exactly how much you're going to use doing it. You've got a few screens there. You've got your main home screen, which is like a featured. Um, there's a featured there. I mean, program, so you can go in and go, oh, show me all the comedy, show me all the drama, show me all the whatever. Yep. All the ABC2, all the ABC3. Um, there's a last chance and a um, newly added section. Nice. So you can just see the stuff that's about to run out of time or the stuff that's just been added if you're up to date. Yep. And my favourite way of doing it is actually with the old watch list. So it lets you set up like a playlist. Sweet. So you can, you know, add things to your playlist and then mm. as they come as they become available, there they are. Right, and you can share this to your social networks as well. You can. Yep. Good. So Good. you set it up for your Facebook or your Twitter account. Yep. Um and they're off you know, if if you really feel it feel that it's necessary that everyone else in the world knows that you happen to be watching that that old episode of Faulty <laughs> Towers or whatever it is. And enjoying some champagne comedy. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> you can push it to Facebook. Absolutely. And uh, now you also have push notifications when a new episode is ready to watch if you've got a part of your watch list. That's right. Uh, now, yep. live streaming, you can stream the ABC News, ABC 24. 
Beautiful. It's going off. It's I know. going off. I know. And, uh, yeah, so cool. I view on your TV, connect your iPad to an external display. So, look, if you've got a, um, what do they call those things? <laughs> Apple TV, Adapters. that's the one. Well, yeah, one of those things as Apple well. Apple TV, you can, you know, stream it straight through that to your TV or yep. you can hook it up physically with the right connector there. All right. Yeah. Nice work. So, yeah. ABC iView app in the uh, Apple iTunes store, app store. Another great one to get. Look, it, to be honest with you, this is, you know, since having my iPhone, this is the main thing I use on my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> this is the most use my iPad gets. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, 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 have a, I, I run this a bit too. All right, yeah. uh, that's a good app. Thanks, uh, Garth. We'll, see you next we'll see time, you again. Glenn. Okay, bye-bye. Well, we're going to see Garth right now because he's here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, good one, Garth. I was also, uh, I saw I was just playing the Xbox through the week, the Xbox 360, and the I've used on the Xbox as well. Is it now? Yeah, it, it is. That is. is indeed. Yeah, it yeah. is indeed. So it's, uh, it's all going on for the eye view, which is good. There's good content Beautiful. on there. Yeah, good content. Um, and all the shows that, you know, you missed, they might be on too late, like uh, 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 Q&A. You know, it might be on a little bit mm. too late for the, for the young kiddies, but you can, uh, you can snap it up the next day, something like that. So, uh, the 3G is only for that what for, for the news too. It's I hate watching Q and A because I get so frustrated. <laughs> oh look, your time will come, Eric. Your time is coming. Because Imagine so you many being there in the there. audience. Oh, you, oh, you get there and you think all these bloody left wing, left wing <laughs> freaking lizards on there. Get off. Why don't you wait till Julia gets on there next time and and, and take a spare set of shoes? <laughs> oh no, if she's on there, I'll make a special trip to the studio, mate. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> all right. So uh, what else is going on in the world of everything? Um, oh, here's another one. This ends. This ends. This is this Exitel one. The Exitel has began offering a top tier service with a hundred meg- megabit downstream speed. So this is their MBN speeds, MBN service. Right. Uh, so they've offered a top tier service, hundred meg down, forty meg up, Ooh. but only twenty five gig of download quota. But that's only. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you go through it in a day. I oh, know, and that's just your uploads, and that's just, and so uh, yeah, that's only for forty five bucks a month. So that's not too bad. You get the good speed. Uh, so okay, that's not bad. Let's be serious. Bucks, that's, that, that's, Hundred that's down, curious. forty up, one terabyte. How much? Uh, no, you can't. Their maximum plan, I think, is only two hundred gig. Uh, well, I won't be going with Exitel. Users can triple the data quota for an extra five dollars a month, or opt into Exitel's most expensive service, one hundred and fifty gig <laughs> download quota for sixty dollars a month. So that's not bad. 150, 150 gigs for 60, for 60 no bucks. No way. When the NBN's around, people are going to start producing content that's HD. Yeah. You will go through 150 gig in a week. Yeah, true, but, but well, as it stands. To give you an example, I mean, most of the talkback tech videos I put up are only 720p, and they're pushing two gig, yeah. and that's only an hour. So. That's what I mean. And mm. once the infrastructure's there that enables full HD, people are going to start using it. Yeah, 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 of mm. course. Well, I know, like with the you know the T box, you can download stuff uh, for free. Like it's it's unmeted, so that's probably yeah, because weird. it's through this through the the carrier. That's yeah. right. Mm. But I suppose, like as it stands, that was this uh, one fifty gig with a hundred up, a hundred down, forty up was eighty nine fifty. So it has come down. It is starting to yeah, you know, I suppose find its little little uh, little flat spot. But uh, other options for lower tiers have also been minimised. With those on the 12 down, one up plan, like why would you bother? 50 gig for 35 a month. That's not too bad, but geez. It's nah, 50 gig. That's, that's one that's day, That's not bad mate. for just somebody who checks emails and stuff like that. Oh, come on. 50 gig. Look, Couple I reckon even ago, old people are going to start was... streaming video when, yeah. when this is out. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think with, the, with, the, with all that, the internet connected on... TVs that are coming, coming along as well, yeah, well, yeah, that's you know, right. You'll be able to you sit down with your remote control and do do mm. your YouTube's. Do your YouTube's and whatnot. Then, then I think you'll see more wide. Yeah, not only that, but YouTube uses. will have HD. People will start yeah. uploading HD videos to YouTube. And they're doing their whole movie well, play as well, already. aren't they? And TV they do shows. They're already. And, they're going to be, you know, yeah. it'll be one hour of HD. Oh, look, and, and all, in all seriousness, now, now we're all here. Got fairly fast internet, maybe except Garth. But uh, if you come across a, uh, a HD. YouTube, well, I don't know. I always click for the higher version, all all the time. Yeah, like, but in no, in, in, in years to I've, come, it'll be it'll be default. It'll be seven twenty default. Mm. Why don't you, Will? I mean, I, mine's defaulted to to three sixty. The only reason for that is because if I click on anything higher, 
it just fails to load. So whether oh. that's I'm that's gonna optimal. go and yeah. do it this. Tomorrow, but, <laughs> but, it, but even with TPG, um, and even when I was with even my friend who's with Telstra has similar problems. It, 480, yeah, anything above that, and you can't, you've got to let it buffer, you can't load it straight up. So, oh, but well, that, Glenn, most of that's to do with the fact there's no servers over here. Well, Glenn and I have that no problem. Be, yeah, yeah it, go, it goes pretty <laughs> smooth. Like, once you chick, click it from um, oh, 360, or whatever it is, to 720, you might get a 10 second delay. Oh, might, five seconds, tops. Yeah, yeah but yeah, but you know, it, it's it's not too bad, it's not too bad. But, the, but here's a kicker for Exitel the company charges a hundred dollar installation fee right yeah but the mbn despite the mbn network being installed for free so that, yeah that's right so that, that's, they're getting their money back on the on the on the on the installation yeah but that, that, well they're not even getting their money most back them will because i'll charge for technicians and stuff to come out and do it hmm. Hmm. but uh but unfortunately exitel founder john linton passed away earlier this week um, Who what? John, oh yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he suffered a stroke last Thursday, second of February. Uh, apparently, just having lunch, but um, it's no good at all. He, yes, yeah, so that's no good. So Linton established Exitel as the telecommunications consultancy in the 1990s, and later became an internet service provider in 2003, competing with low-cost providers for consumer and business internet services. Now Linton, uh, James Linton, his uh, son. Uh, yeah, it just said, uh, yeah, it was a quite a bit of a shocker, obviously. He was just having a bit of a food and a bit of a drink, and um, away he went. So, yeah, no good at all. See you, see you, John. See you, John. It's weird, like, a lot of those companies, like Exitel, have been around forever, but they're sort of a very under, uh, well, under-established company, I suppose. Most people don't know about them. Never heard of them, either. Um, <laughs> that doesn't I, say nothing. Well, we used to use them in Melbourne. For a, they they, for a they do a lot of corporates, they, yeah. They were the best, but... They yeah, do a lot of yeah, corporates, yeah. yeah. Now, um, Eric, did you have any stories, other stories? Yeah, I've got a Google story. Got a Mo- Google Motorola story. Because they did buy the mobile uh, phone business of Motorola. Yeah. Google here, it says, Google will pledge to license on fair and reasonable terms the patents it acquires through buying Motorola Mobility in a bid to allay regulatory and users' concerns. Obviously... Because there's a lot of um, yeah patents, uh, other handsets yeah. using Android out there, and they don't want to favour Motorola, Motorola handsets. Well, they'd like to. Well, be. that's what they're saying. <laughs> they probably they will, but that, they're yeah. saying they won't because you know their motto is "Don't be evil," which we all know is a load of crap. <laughs> they got to make money. The world, they got to make money. The world's the world's number one search internet search engine will send a letter to the European Telecommunications Standards Institute and other global bodies with the promise. The non-profit Etsy, which has members from 62 countries, produces standards for telephony, internet, and internet technologies globally. So what they're saying, we all know what they're saying. They're saying, please let this, let our purchase pass. We promise to be good boys, and we won't um, flood the market with Motorola at the exclusion of anybody else. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, basically... yeah, we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, who, who knows? <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> But Telstra, Telstra is investigating mail, email delivery issues. I don't know if anyone just picked up on this as a quick one. Uh, since the weekend, mm. yeah, uh, there's only a small, small amount of email issues. Posted on Broadband Forum Whirlpool, they've indicated that the posters have indicated the Big Pond server uh, might have been listed on uh, real-time spam blacklists. Uh, Telstra spokesman said that the issue was under full investigation staff were checking affected email addresses. So the emails were bouncing back. So that's no good for Telstra or for the email. Um, <laughs> Sarah, have you got, did you have another one? Or I'll tell you what, oh, he's there's got, a he's story here flat. that's interesting. Now, you went flat, we've, Eric. we've had... Yeah, go, Will. Hey, what? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um... There's, yeah, basically, there's a story about, because in this country we use SIM cards for our phones as opposed to, like, in the States where most of them are CDMA and you're sort of restricted. But every time you wanted to change providers, you've had to change SIM cards. Yeah. So, basically, there's a uh, sort of a a recommendation going through between Australia and New Zealand at the moment, uh, basically saying they're trying to figure out a way that you can change, you can 
change providers basically without having to change SIM cards, having to change phone numbers, or having to port it across, reset your voicemail. So that they're basically decoupling, it's called, um, domestic and roaming services as well. Um, and they're even looking at scrapping roaming charges because effectively they're just a giant ripoff. Mm. Um, but it'll be interesting. Hopefully, by the end of this year, they're going to make it have a decision as to whether they're going to be able to actually do it or not. So, is this between be New Zealand and Australia? So, roaming charges are international uh, well, roaming uh, charges. You're saying what you know, no, no roaming between New Zealand and Australia, it's all the one. No, this, this, um, this sort of action is being carried out by the telcos in Australia and New Zealand, but they're hoping, like roaming charges, for example, they're hoping to ditch worldwide, at least on, you know, if you go overseas using Telstra, for example, they're going to ditch the roaming charges to call international. Mm. Um, they obviously can't. I don't know how they can do that. International <laughs> You're going to have to get all the international but... providers on board with that. I, you know, that's not something we can... Mm. Anyway, I'll do but it. here's I've got here. Uh, Eric, are you back? Can you speak? No, Eric. We lost no, Eric. Eric uh, we lost Eric. He's cocked it. He's cocked it. <laughs> What's happened? What's happened? Um, well, I was but see, a lot of the reason is because a lot of the mobile providers are what they call virtual network Hello. operators. They That's don't own the towers. They don't own the devices. Things like that. Yeah. They simply just rent resellers. Rent that. Hour. So they're basically can hoping that because of that, they can switch. Yes. Yeah. Can we you hear me? Hello. Yes, hello. You're yeah. back. Sorry, yeah. mate. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. So um. Yeah, but here, I've got another one here. Will that's probably right up your alley. Because I know, yeah, I know you got long dark alleys. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> AMD. <laughs> AMD reveals plans to enter the tablet market. Do you hear that one? Uh. AMD. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh. That'll be uh. That'd be one. Well, there's you, there's two schools one. of thought on this one. They're going to put and it on the HP is... touchpad. <laughs> AMD said it plans to make its debut in the tablet space this year uh, with the launch of the uh, with an ultra low power APU, which is an accelerated processing unit dubbed Hondo. Where are these names? Oh, that's easy, from? mate. All you got to do is make sure you sell a tablet without a screen. <laughs> then there's low power. And uh, we'll also introduce its um, new Trinity APU. Yes, Will. What? There's a massive delay, sorry. Um, basically, there's what they're going to do. See, now that they've acquired, because they've acquired um, ATI as well, so basically this goes for the desktops and, and laptops as well as tablets. They're basically now uh, integrating the graphic chips onto their CPUs, which increase, obviously, speed of the graphic chip as well because the data hasn't got to travel across the motherboard. So this uh, ultra-low-powered accelerated processing in is effectively a combination CPU, GPU. Um, so theoretically, it should be fairly low power because it's it's all on the one die. Mm. So mm. yeah. So, but uh, I think I'm see. not sure when the when the, any sort of launch date. I think it was what to say launch. Uh, I think it was was it later this year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But the, the, they've got. They're trialling it now. Um, part of the problem is, obviously, once again, you're either going to have to choose Android or your own operating system. And then if you go Android, you've got to write the kernel to run the program. So at the moment, even though they've got the hardware set up, they've got to design the software to work with it because mm. there aren't any, um, any versions of Android designed for... The, the old APU. Processor, so. <laughs> the new APU. Now, um, I've got a question. I've got an email through the week. Now, this is um, on, well, not on notice. What do you call that, Eric, when you're not uh, off the... Question without notice. Without, without notice. notice. Not work. on notice without notice. <laughs> that's, without, that's the word I'm Well, it's for. not really without notice because I read it before. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, well, do you know the answer? But anyway, we're all, do you know the answer or we can wait yep. till next week? Oh, he knows the answer. Okay, so what's going uh, on? I'll read, the, I'll read the question for you. I've got, I've got a answer. I don't know if it's the right answer. <laughs> Get an apple. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> get rid of the fucking Android. Oh, good one. And now we're on to uh, the email is Adrian from the Gold Coast. He's trying to run Duke 3D on the Android tab. And he has Honeycomb. It appears he needs, or as his email goes, it appears I need a Java emulator. Where do I get it? And is it hard to install? Will. Um, 
I don't know what tablet. The problem is it doesn't actually say what particular tablet it's it's trying to go on, but from my testing of my six or eight Android devices that I've got here, um, and I've got a couple of Honeycomb, a couple on you know, various ones, and I haven't had that problem. Um, Java is installed by default, more or less. Um, you can, I don't know. I'm assuming the Java emulator he's talking about is is the emulation that the, the software installs with. The only thing I can think of is it hasn't installed correctly because I've even tried to look up that and the sort of nothing specifies you need Java. So, so you're saying there that, is another option. You're that, saying the Duke 3D should just install onto the tab and the way it goes. Yeah, as I said, I've tried it on. I've tried it on about. One, two. I've tried it on six devices, and it's worked without a problem. Um, the only thing I can think of is 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 there something not quite right in the marketplace, and it's trying to install the wrong version. So mm. maybe the only other option would be to go to the developer's website. If you go to the marketplace, then the app it tells you the developer. Go to their actual website and maybe do a direct download from their website for your version. Right, right. Also, but but in, in any case, like because you think, it, you feel it should just work straight off the bat. It should. Um, it doesn't. See, the weird part is it doesn't use Java emulation. It's actually a a proper app. So I don't really know why it's saying it needs that. Mm. But um, you can install Java uh, as as an app as well. So maybe. Yeah. I don't know, maybe install that, but it shouldn't be the same as um, Doom. There's Doom, there's Duke 3D, there's Quake, there's a whole heap of them. They're all basically made by the same, more or less on the same platform. Um, and a couple of them like like Duke and, and Quake and made, well, actually in Doom, mm. are all made by the same um, developers. So yeah. I don't know. I, I a, couldn't find could any just, information on that. Yeah, um, it might be just a, a problem specific to his configuration maybe. Uh, might have to uh, Rudy's tab or something. I don't know. Don't know. But anyway, no, you shouldn't have to do any of that. I mean, it is big. We're, we're, you're talking, you know, sixty odd meg of download just yeah. for the the lev- first the first uh, episode. Um, so it's possible that it just hasn't. So you can install the app without the maps. So it'll launch, but it, you can't play it. So it's possible something's gone pear-shaped because it is such a big download. Yeah, I'll well, say so like, re-download it, try again. Yeah. yeah. All right. So hopefully, Adrian, that helps you out. If not, um, you know Will's address. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Get but, me up. Yeah, but just see Come how you talk go. talk back to him and we'll work through it. Yeah, re-download <laughs> it and uh, see how you go. All right, now I've got uh, one more story. Did you boys, have you guys got anything else you want to get off your chest? Just a quick one. Yo. For any uh, iPhone owners out there, they're selling covers like this now to make your, the back of your phone look like an old iMac. Oh, right. Oh, they're <laughs> awesome, aren't they? I saw, I saw that. <laughs> Hang on, just, just uh, that's it. There we go. Oh, look at that. It looks like the old, the old Macintosh, um, the old iMacs. Yeah, there's a few I'll different ones. They look there's really another cool, one. actually. There's one, there's one here. One more. That's oh the, yes, that the Macintosh. Yeah. yeah. So what oh, you got to do no, when you hold when you and everything. Hang on, so when you hold it up, Eric, you just got to talk to take the focus to yourself. Hello there. That's it. There you go. <laughs> look at that. Oh yes, look Hello at the there. oh the original Macintosh. Macs. That's the I one. thought you were switching, mate. I thought you were doing the switching. No, no, I've just captured the one the one screen and I'm letting Google uh, do the auto good. switch. Okay, there All you go. All right, we've got it so now. You can get the iPhone. If you click on the person, it'll capture. There you go. Yeah, Where do you get those from, Eric? No idea. Okay. And well, now, that's not very <laughs> helpful. Uh, sh- <laughs> Shreya <laughs> Shre- Shre- Delights. S C H R E E R. Shreya Shre- Delights, yes. Oh, maybe. maybe. Go. I'm Google delighted. It. I'm delighted. Now, uh, Amazon, this is probably my second last story. Uh, Amazon access cloud storage prices. Anyone's got a cloud storage with Amazon, well, well, you are jumping up and down for joy because the price drop comes as Amazon S3 experienced massive growth. Oh, massive growth. The Amazon S3 Cloud Storage Service closed out 2011 with more than 762 billion objects stored, which uh, reflects year after year growth of 192%. Uh, with a cloud storage price now, so what's happening? Anyone with cloud storage, it's dropped. They're dropping the price per gig. 
Now I can tell you what the the cost of the uh, first terabyte of storage uh, was. Uh, it was. It was. I'll tell you how much it was. Was fourteen cents per gig, and now it's twelve and a half cents. And for the next forty nine terabytes, it uh, it was fifteen cents, and now it's ten cents. So look, it, it, all this stuff is getting cheaper. The price change took effect on February one. So um, but it still like works out. What one terabyte times twelve point five cents? So that's a thousand. So it's about hundred what one hundred twenty five dollars a month if you've got a terabyte. So yes, yeah, it's quite a bit, isn't it? Expensive. That's very expensive. Yeah, but a terabyte's mm. quite yeah. a that's lot. That's stupid. But but that'll come down. Yeah. In a, in a related I mean, story. I still don't understand. Yeah. Sorry, sorry mate. Just in a related, Google apparently is said to be readying its own cloud-based storage service called Drive. Right. And right. they're going to they're going to take on Dropbox. Yeah, they've been talking about this for a while, haven't they? So the, that, this, is, this yeah, is according to the has been in the works for years. Yeah, but you know when it when it appears in a Wall Street Journal, it's pretty accurate. It's probably about to happen. <laughs> so it's about to happen. So with the, uh, they don't report on anything unless they're sh- they're fed income. So w- so what you're saying is with Amazon, uh, can you can you access their their cloud storage as like a drive letter? Can you do that? Uh, no, you can't. You can yeah. access it via web page. Well, I haven't been able to. Um, and, but I haven't. I can't work out how to map the drive if if there is such a thing. Unless you can do it via Gladinet. Oh yes, you you probably could. That's Unless not a bad can. little bit of software. That Gladinet. Yeah, I've I, got it here. I've, I've got, linked that up to micro, the, to Live Microsoft Live. I've, yeah, I've got it Sky on Live, Live Box.net, and um, Google Docs. Right. And and what other and the storage services? Yeah, Amazon. So when it you does say Amazon via this Amazon S3 bucket. So when you say um, that um, Google's doing the uh, Dropbox type situation, yeah, uh, they want to do a Dropbox. In other words, you know, it's just be exactly like Dropbox. Well, what's the difference that's between simple. what Go- what Google's got now and what what they're looking at? It was the usage. They it's they can't you know now you can't map a drive. Google, well, you know what it's like. You got Dropbox. You yeah, install it yeah. and it's there. Mm. Yeah, right. It's like a drive on your. It's like a drive on your on yeah. your system. Mm. Whereas. Mm. But at also, the moment, Google Docs isn't like that. Unless you've got something like Gladnet that you, right. handles it for yeah, you. Yeah, there, there is a way around it. But the thing is, once they bring it up like Dropbox, it'll be more, you know, simple. you can have an app for mobile devices and That's right. yeah, things exactly. like that. What, what you need is to get the developers behind it, you know, to integrate it into their apps. That's, so, that's oh, the thing will. that Dropbox once, has got to jump on they, all of these services is the integration. Yeah. It's already It's already there, you know. Once I release it, they will. Hmm. And uh, my last story for tonight... It'll be very handy to have because it's possible the way that it's actually going to work is instead of storing stuff on your SD card, you, when you install a 100 meg app, it's possible that it could even store it in the cloud. Hmm. Mm. The cloud's the way to go. Uh, 4G Samsung Galaxy Tab is about to debut in March. An inside source at Telstra has confirmed the existence of this tab, eight, a Galaxy Tab 8.9 LTE, which <laughs> will launch in either late February or early March. Uh, the new Galaxy model will come with an 8.9-inch display and will be the first 4G LTE tablet in Australia. There you, there go. you go. Is That's that the one that includes, uh, uh, what did they say, Unif- unicorn dust? <laughs> no, I don't know. What the hell is unicorn dust? That's a- no, that's uh, that- uni- <laughs> u- pixie dust and unicorn tears. Yep. All right. Yeah, what was that in? Uh, that was a s- some tablet that was supposed to be seven millimeters wide and, and all this sort of stuff. Seven millimeters <laughs> wide. It's a pretty small display. Yeah. yeah. No, like stick. It's for the pixies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but oh, there was wasn't there a phone? Yeah, they they got pixies and pixels confused. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Look, I saw I saw a phone getting launched. I don't know what what it was, but it was supposed to be like seven mil thick or something. And like, I mean, that's too thin. I think I think they're pretty. I think they're all seven mil thick. The whole lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, because like, look, I don't Mine's know. Like, not. I've got Mine's my, like an inch and a half. I, I don't. I don't mind a chunky bit of bit of phone. Like, no, oh, hey, but you don't mind a <laughs> chunky bit. Oh, what? I love a bit of chunky plastic in your pocket. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. look! But see, this oh, is God. this is my my galaxy. Is that, a ga- is that a galaxy note, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> I'm not glad to see anything <laughs> in this, gal- this bloody Google thing. But, but this, see, that's I've got mine. The long life. 
the long life uh you can't really see it on the video it's horrible but i've got a long life battery in mine so oh, yeah. that doubles the yeah. thickness of i've it. seen those you know what i use those for will i put it behind my back tie so i don't roll down the hill <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's pretty hard. That's not far off the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple ones are exactly the Tell same. What, that's why he's got this, seven. This that's why he's got seven. Has seven. Had, <laughs> this phone has had an absolute flogging. The amount of times it's been dropped and kicked and come off the roof of the car and slid down the road, and it still goes. You couldn't do that with an iPhone. The first time you drop it, the screen would break. Yeah, but then yeah, you just know, walk in and they look, give you a new but one. Look, but the iPhone looks nicer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It spends half its life in my pocket. Who's going to see? Um, my pocket. My pocket will not do with anything that's it's, ugly. Mate. It's a very discerning, discerning it's a pocket. It's a very, very discerning pocket. Now, <laughs> now just, just, some, just some quick stories that, uh, that I've just uh, seen in Eric's little list here that, are, that probably should be aired. Microsoft is to unveil Windows 8 late February. So uh, well, let's, uh, let's uh, wait for that, eh? All right. Everyone, survey. Hands up. Who's going to... Uh, Get Windows 8 when it comes out. Yeah. For a PC. I'm oh, not yeah. talking tablet here. Yep. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Anyone? Yep, Glenn? Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm mainly, not, I'm not mainly just it. to try it. Whether or, not I, whether or not I switch to it, something completely yeah. different. But I'm definitely. Well, I'm not going to touch it. it. On no. a tablet, I think it'll work well. But on a PC, I have tried it, and it's a piece of pus. Yeah, but vi- vi- well, yeah, so Vista continue to be a piece of pus, but Vista was also more pussier in its development stage. In but the, you know, my, this is this is Microsoft. Every second release is a piece of pus. And Windows 7 was brilliant, and it still is. And so this one is due to be the piece of pus. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah, not, not going to go anywhere. I'll go. I'll wait till they come out with Windows 9, I think, before I upgrade <laughs> Windows 7. Yeah, no, look, I mean, I'll, I'll put I'll it on. It, I'll have it purely for the, the fact that I probably need to. So if people ask me questions or people want to know about it, I can answer that. But it's, I, it's I an easy answer, mate. Just say, just say, stay yeah, away, stay away. Just stay away from it. That's it. <laughs> Problem well, solved. They yeah, send them I an invoice. Tell people to do that to Vista too, but they don't. I tell they people don't stay away from Vista too, but they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got to know about it so that I can help them out when not oh, if, but when mate. it fails. I warn them. It's like when I give my clients advice: don't do it if you go. If you, then if you go do it and you come running to me, I'm not going to wave no magic wand because I told you not to go near that investment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's so a few of those go ones away. Around. Now, what's this Facebook? What's this Facebook one, Eric? Facebook's S- S- Edward Saverin sold some of his shares in a side deal in 2010, which no one knew about, but it had to come out as part of their IPO filing. He sold it to a Russian firm in 2010. Well, yeah, they're uh, they're all up on the up and up, the Russians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he, he's he's founding shares. Apparently, he had. Um, it doesn't, it's not clear how many shares he had, but he did sell his shares, some of his shares, to Digital Sky Technologies in 2010. And now Digital Sky Technologies and its affiliates own 5.4% of Facebook. Um, and then Digital Sky and a related party were said to own 8.2%. So there's another few percentage points there. So I'm suggesting that he's probably offloaded most of his stock mm. as part of this float and he's probably still got a couple two or three percent yeah which would still be worth quite a bit of money but um oh well three percent to work it out ten percent of 100 billion is 10 billion yeah so he's yeah, got two percent he's got two bill. two bill yeah that's not bad is it that's not bad. uh it's not not chump change is it no not bad at all and it's going to hit it's going to hit 150 200 billion on float day are you going to invest that's in the it? valuation on well, you can't get it in australia but you us you, only but you still could invest in if you wanted to yeah, but you'd be a mug to freaking buy it on the open market the day it lists because you'd be paying yeah. double. I, I don't think I don't personally, and I'm not an investor in shares, but I don't think it it might go gangbusters on the day of the float. I reckon it'll just dive. I don't think it'll go anywhere. <laughs> you heard it here first, people. <laughs> That's a pretty big call. <laughs> Dump them now. <laughs> I reckon it might have been one of the smartest moves Steve Barmer made though, buying into Facebook. Well, Microsoft bought a fair whack of Facebook, ten yeah. percent, I think. That's, that's right. Yeah, they did too. But you now, I just think it's all—it's just all. There's all, a lot of hype. Yeah, There's definitely all, a lot of hype in this. On fluff. Within the first week, it'll double, and then within a year, it'll settle down. Yeah. And it'll probably, and then after within twelve months, it then it has to its share price will be based on its results. Yeah. I'm and gonna, if its results 
I'm going to I'm going to match its valuation, then the valuation will be marked down. It's that simple. I'm going to I'm going to bloody ring up Gordon Gecko after the show. See what he thinks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> greed is good for one of a better word, greed for life. Greed yeah. for money, greed for food. Greed is good. All right. Is good. <laughs> All right. Slick your hair back, get your microphone, off you go. Off you go, away you go. That's where we're going. So, all right, so thanks for joining us, episode two, uh, 276. Uh, don't forget the paper comes out twice a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Thanks to all the listeners from around the world and, in, and Australia. Live video, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. Uh, audio only, radio.thesecrethub.com and uh, live.thesecrethub.com on a, tu- on a Thursday night. Now, also, if you go to live.thesecrethub.com or live.aussietechheads.com.au, uh, you can see probably just reruns of stuff that we've done. There's always something going. So always something uh, playing on live.aussietechheads.com.au. So have a look at that. Uh, thanks, Garth, for coming in tonight. Thank you, sir. And I hope you had fun over there, sitting all by yourself over in the back in the barracks over there. Back row. <laughs> That's right. And um, thanks, Eric, for coming in. Welcome, sir. And William, thanks for, for putting up with your bad internet to uh, do the show. Yeah, so I'll go and yell at Optus and see if it's better for next week. Yeah, you want to? You have to wait. You might have to go and talk nicely to him. him. Yeah, you might. You might have to. Um, <laughs> yeah, go back to ASDL or something. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm just going to threat. I'm just going to say to him, look, I'm paying 150 dollars a month for internet that you're not giving me. I'll take my last three months back, please, and I'll go to Telstra. Hmm. You're seriously yeah. paying 150 dollars a month. You, I will. Well, do you get cable? Do you get, getting can you get nice Telstra money. cable where you are? No, I can have Optus ADSL or Telstra Cable. No, uh, other way, other way around. around. Sorry, sorry, other way around. Optus, Op- Optus Cable or Telstra ADSL. What's your um, distance from the exchange? Do you know? A long way. Oh, is it? Mm. Yeah, oh, so it, the yeah, ADSL. That was my issue. Is it? That ADSL was my biggest concern about it. going ADSL was it was quite a fair way. Is it, Are you three kilometres, five kilometres? Uh, about nine, I think. Oh, you won't get it from the exchange. You'll be on a rim. Yeah, yeah you can still they, get it on some They say I here. can get it, but they're not going to guarantee my speeds. Yeah, yeah. right. It'll be plus. They'll have, they'll have to do a line test why I went, they install it. Which is why I went cable, assuming I was going to get decent cable. Yeah. <laughs> and I well, did. It was fine. And then but, it rained. But it's, obvious, it's, a shame <laughs> that, it's a shame you can't get Telstra cable. It really is. Mm. But, but it's obviously a problem. Yeah, if with... I was two streets that way, I could. Oh. Move, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you've done enough of that. <laughs> dude, d- dig a dig a ditch. Yeah, <laughs> go go and watch the um. <laughs> what was that? Dig a ditch and lie in it. <laughs> go and watch I'll the go and watch the Great Escape. Couple of streets over and pay for internet over there. Go and watch the Great Escape for some inspiration. <laughs> all right, so we're we're out of here. <laughs> so that's uh that's the show for tonight. We'll see you all next week when we've got more of the same sort of stuff, and um, but all uh, all different. So uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening and goodbye. Bye-bye. See you guys. Good night. (laughs) See ya.